responses to Christmas. Some people respond to Christmas in the right way, others not so much. Here's a, a, a few things that might let you know if you are responding to Christmas in a wrong way. If you turn on the lawn sprinklers to keep the carolers away, you might not have the right response to Christmas. If you give bathroom fixtures as presents, you might not have the right idea. If your favorite Christmas movie is the first 30 minutes of A Christmas Carol, you might not have the right response. If your best Christmas tradition involves a grill and reindeer meat, you might not be responding to Christmas right. If your favorite pastime at Christmas is sneaking to your neighbor's yard and taking out a bulb so they all go out, you might be wrong. If your only outdoor holiday decoration is a rotting pumpkin, <laughs> left over from Halloween, you know, probably a wrong response. If you buy all of your Christmas presents at a store that also sells gas and Slurpees, <laughs> probably not doing it right. Our passage this morning comes from, you heard a portion of it during the Advent lighting, uh, comes from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 20. And it reads, And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find the baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angels, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. This is God's word for us and all people. Thanks be to God. So like I said earlier, everybody responds to Christmas. Some respond in, in proper ways. Some respond in, in not so much proper ways. The shepherds, in their response, we see a number of right things that happened in regards to that first Christmas. Informed by an angel that a Savior was born, they knew the first thing they had to do was to seek out this Savior this Christ child, and that was the right response. How do we respond today to the news that God has become flesh and made His dwelling among men? How do we respond to the fact that we are free from the bondage of sin through this Christ child? How do we respond to a baby born in a manger sent to die for our sins and the fact that He desires to be an intimate part of our daily living? Well, we're in the third week of our Advent series titled, I'm Dreaming of a Right Christmas. <coughs> Week one, we discovered that if we want to have a right Christmas, we must have a right focus. And the focus of our Christmas should be on Christ and our salvation. And then last week, we learned that to have a right Christmas, we must have a right pace. And that is a pace that's marked by peace through Christ. Today, I want you to know that if you're going to have a right Christmas, you must have a right response in regards to Christmas. You can tell a lot about people by the way that they respond to certain situations. Uh, this is a true story. Like Wendy Bagwell used to say, my hand up, this is a, this is a fact. A busload of small children were on a daycare trip. I can't remember where it was. I think it was in Minnesota somewhere. I saw it on the news this week. Suddenly the bus is pulled over to the side of the highway and a mass e evacuation takes place. All the kids are hurriedly rushed off the bus out into a rainstorm. 
What caused this? Was it an act of terror? Was it a medical emergency? Maybe, maybe it was a major malfunction of the engine and the bus was about to catch fire. No, it was a peanut. One single peanut lying on the floor. What should the staff do? I mean, there might be a kid who is allergic to peanuts, and that kid might rush past all of the teachers, throw himself on that legume of death, and, and just eat dirt and all. What's the response that's proper? Pick it up, throw it away? No. Pull over on the side of a busy highway, get all the kids off the bus out into the rain, and call the authorities. I kid you not, it was in the news this week. That is not the right response, right? It seems that when it comes to response to things nowadays, there is a, a, a lack of common sense. How do you respond to things? How do you respond to the news, to the good news of the Savior born? Our society responds to Christmas in a lot of different ways. And when I say our society, I'm talking about Christian society. Sometimes the response is to, is to play the let's not offend anybody game when it comes to Christmas. I mean, do we say Merry Christmas? It mentions Christ, or do we say Happy Holidays? Do we put up nativities or less offensive winter displays? Do our coffee cups need to be holiday censored? In our all-out efforts to be inclusive and not offensive, we may have just found that we have responded to Christmas in every way except the right way. The gospel is good news of God's love being brought down to earth and salvation through Jesus Christ. And if that offends someone, they've got bigger problems than us saying Merry Christmas to them. Now, we have been commanded to go by Jesus Christ and share his message. <clears throat> now, common sense says we don't do it in an offensive way. We don't have to be angry. We don't have to be gruff and in your face. But this is not a, an option to, this is not something we can opt out of doing. And our efforts to be non offensive, maybe we have neglected that part of the great commandment. Just because it offends someone doesn't mean we're any less obligated to share the good news of Jesus Christ. And then there is this. I know of some churches that don't have Christmas Eve services to get it because of this. They don't want to take time away from people's family time. And that's, if that's not enough, if Christmas falls on a Sunday... It's a complete day off. No services. And that falls right into the atheist game plan. Have you seen the big billboard sign? I saw it on uh, Fox News from Greensville this week. It's in upstate South Carolina somewhere. The atheists have put out a big billboard. It's a huge, pretty billboard with Santa sitting in front of a cozy fire with his feet propped up. And the text over it all says... It's okay to skip church this Christmas. And then underneath it says, just make sure you stay off the naughty list. That's not a response that we can have, folks. If we as Christians can't come to church at Christmas time, there's something very, very wrong. We have ceased to be the church of Jesus Christ. I mean, the day we celebrate the coming of our Savior to earth, if we can't tear ourselves away from our family and presence long enough to come and worship, we need to make some efforts to see if we are really in Christ or not. And then others have tried to downplay Christmas by, by trying to be so inclusive in our traditions that they have lost the uniqueness of Christmas, of what it really is. In some places there are churches that have all the services, but in an effort to make visitors comfortable, they have removed any mention of Christ in their Christmas services. Might as well be a, a lovely Christmas sing-along where the focus is snow and, and times of, of, of presents and a jolly old man in a red suit. Those things are fine and well, but not to be the focus. 
The focus of our Christmas must be Jesus Christ, as we talked about in week one. So how do we respond to the news of, uh, do not be afraid, I bring you great news of, of, of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find that baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. I want us to look at the lives of the shepherds and we'll see some right responses to Christmas. The first is a right response comes through contentment. <clears throat> the occupation of a shepherd was, was common in the time of Jesus and it was a job that was viewed in, in different ways. To people outside of Israel, shepherding was considered disgusting. It, was, it carried the idea that it was a job that you had if you had no other skills. It was actually viewed to be below homelessness. You know, even the homeless wouldn't be a shepherd. You've got to be below that in society. It was a job for the lowest people. They were viewed as people that were outcast, smelly, and basically they were a waste of humanity in the eyes of people. Now in Israel it was viewed a little differently. A shepherd was still seen as one of the lowest positions in society, but it carried some great responsibility with it. You see, the shepherds watched over the lambs and the sheep that one day would, would be used as sacrifice to atone for the sins of the people. Though not held in high esteem, it was, it was still somewhat honorable among Israelites. People understood that contentment came with the life of a shepherd. In fact, the greatest shepherd of all, other than Jesus Christ, and that Jesus wasn't their shepherd yet, but King David, the little shepherd boy, he grew up to be a great king, yet he wrote the words, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You see, shepherds understand commitment, or contentment. They didn't jockey for position. They cared for their sheep. That's what they did. They didn't fight and claw their ways to climb the ladder of success. They weren't into shepherding for the rewards. Their focus was their flock. Shift after shift, they took care of their sheep. They developed a relationship with the sheep. The sheep knew them and trusted them and would follow wherever they led. The shepherd's job was to keep the sheep safe, well fed, and they did their job, earned their pay, they took care of the sheep, and that's all they were. Shepherds had no false view of themselves. They didn't glamorize their lives, and they were fine with who they were. They were shepherds. A shepherd saw their life as one of, of the common person, the everyday Joe. They understood the words that Solomon wrote in Proverbs 30 when Solomon said, Give me neither poverty nor riches, but give me only my daily bread. Otherwise, I may have too much and disown you and say, Who is the Lord? Or I may become proper or poor and still and so dishonor the name of my God. You see, they were content with where they were and with what they had. Maybe that's why God chose to make the announcements of the, of the newborn king to the shepherds first. People who were hardworking but didn't value themselves above, the, above other people. People who didn't have a lot, yet they were content. So I want to ask you this question. This Christmas season, how content are you? What is your motivation in Christmas? Are you content with celebrating the coming king? Or, or is your primary concern with the material items and purchases that are not going to bring you more happiness? Which is it? So I challenge you to take some time this week and evaluate your contentment with Christmas. Take a look at how you're responding to Christmas. We can have a right response by being content. And when we're content in Jesus, we'll find that not only will we have a right Christmas, but our lives on the whole will be right. And then the right response comes when we have the right heart at Christmas. A couple have been married for several years, and if the truth be told, the the spark was gone. They were just kind of going along. And they sought out a marriage counselor, and after a couple sessions, the, the, the counselor suggested that they attend a, a marriage retreat. 
And they finally consented and they went and the, the retreat was going great until the facilitator said to the couple, your wife, to the man, your wife is, is interested in the small things of your marriage. She don't need great big gifts and things. She's interested in the small things. So let's start small. Evaluate how well you know each other. Like, what is your wife's favorite flower? He said, oh, I knew that one. It's Martha White self-rising. <laughs> Obviously, the wrong response, not even on the same page together. The shepherd's response showed that their hearts were right. They were on the same page with what God was bringing into mankind. Did you catch their response after the angelic announcement? Uh, the last part of verse 15 reads, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has told us about. Another translation says, Come on, let's go. There's an air of excitement. Having the right heart is essential if there's going to be a right response to Christmas. On that night, the shepherd's hearts were right. Knowing a Savior was born compelled him to, to go and search out that Savior. Now, they had just witnessed an overwhelming display of things. And there, there's really no way that they could fathom all that the angel's announcement meant to them. But they did understand that there was a need for a Savior in the world and in their lives. Every year, you see, they would watch over their flocks and they would watch as the priest would come and take their most perfect lamb to the temple for sacrifice to cover the sins of Israel. And now they hear the news that a Savior is born. What other response could there be but to get up and go to Bethlehem? Many people can't respond to Christmas in the right way because their hearts are not right. Jesus came to this world so that our hearts might not only be right, but that we might be made right with God. Paul wrote in Romans 5, for if by the trespass of the one man, death reigned through that one man, how much more will those who receive God's abundant provisions of grace and the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ? The right response to Christmas is to turn our heart toward Christ and receive Him and receive His righteousness. He took our sin, we get His righteousness. The shepherds sought the Savior and discovered the one who would, would one day make them right in front of God. So this Christmas, why not seek out the one who can not only change your heart, but the one who took your sin so that you can have his righteousness. The shepherds sought him out and they found him. If we seek Christ, we will find him. And then the right response to Christmas is complete when we worship. <coughs> 16 and following in our passage. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were, were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart, and the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen. We see two aspects to the shepherds' worship here. First, they praised God. They celebrated the fact that they had seen the Savior, and that was great cause for worship. Secondly, they, they told everyone what they had experienced. They were so full of the glory of God that it spilled out into their conversations and their lifestyle. Everywhere they went, they told others about Christ. And that passage of Scripture teaches us a lot about worship. It teaches us that worship is not confined to a place or a set time. The shepherds were far from the temple, which was the right place to worship. Yet scripture tells us they were praising God. Worship is not something that we do for an hour on Sunday morning. Worship is, is to be a lifestyle. It's not an event on the calendar marked by time and space. It is what our lives are to be. Worship involves verbal expression to God. John MacArthur defines worship as the visible, audible, and otherwise public testimony that brings glory to God. 
It's exalting God. Affirming God, affirming His attributes, reflecting on His character, praising Him for who He is and making Him known to other people. While the shepherds may have been considered undesirables of society, they sure did understand what it meant to worship God, to have a right response toward Jesus. And worship involves verbal expression about God. The shepherds left the stable and the manger full of joy, but with also they had a message to tell. Everybody they ran into would hear about the great things that God had done. In the same way, our worship is a testimony to what God has done in us and through us. And we are to live a life of worship, which includes verbally telling others about Christ. Maybe the reason that people don't have a right response at Christmas is because they're not worshiping God. Maybe they're worshiping other things. Materialism. Time off from work. Maybe they're worshiping giving and receiving gifts. Maybe they're worshiping family. Maybe they are worshiping God, but they're keeping their worship in a closet when we're called to shout at the rooftops. An amazing thing happens when we offer praise to God. When we worship God, our hearts are filled with joy. So understanding the shepherd's response, how can we have a right response to Christmas in our lives? First, we have a right response when we worship and confess our sins to God. The angel's message to Joseph was the child would be born who would save his people from their sins. Christmas is not so much about gifts that we give to other people, but about God who gave us the ultimate gift of salvation through His Son. 1 John 1 9 says, If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. A right response to Christmas is confessing our sins to God, and we confess knowing that God will forgive us and, and uh, will bring us into a right relationship with we also have a right response when we put our faith in God alone. There's just a few more days left to shop this year. We have scoured the malls. We have shopped online. We have sought out the perfect gift. A lot of emphasis goes into the gifts that we give. Like I just said a minute ago, maybe we need to spend a little more time thinking about receiving a gift. The best gift that we can receive this year is not in the store. It's Jesus Christ. If you have not given your life to Christ, I encourage you to have the right response this year. Christmas is a spiritual time for many people. But then there are others who go through Christmas every year feeling like something is missing. And I'm not talking to you, I'm talking to people who have been baptized, who have <clears throat> pledged allegiance to Christ before in their lives. Have you strayed away from that? <clears throat> that gift is there for you. It's there for you. So if you feel you have gone away from Christ, or if you have drifted, if you feel there's something missing in your heart, in your life, and your family this Christmas, chances are it's Jesus Christ. Receive it. And then a right response comes with a content heart. Our culture has become one that's so discontent that you know what the second most popular shopping day is? December 26th. The day after we celebrate the birth of our Savior. The stuff that was given to us on that day, we're not happy with it anymore. We've got to go exchange it and get rid of it and get something that we think is going to bring more joy to our lives. As Christians, we need to realize that no gift is greater than God's gift of salvation through Christ. It's been said that Christmas is the gift of heaven, of God's Son given for free. And if Christmas isn't found in your heart, you'll never find it in your so how about we just be content with that gift? 
and then respond with a clear witness. We respond by God to God by proclaiming His Word with clarity. Paul wrote to the Thessalonians, he said, Pray for us that the Word of the Lord may spread rapidly and be glorified just as it did with you. When God's Word is given exposure and people hear it, people are saved and God is glorified. Acts 13 records the response to, of Paul's teachings of the gospel. It says, And when the Gentiles heard this, they began rejoicing and glorifying the word of the Lord. And as many as had been appointed to eternal life believed, and the word of the Lord was being spread through the whole region. God's message, the good news, God's love is found in His word. And whenever and wherever we give His word exposure, we are glorifying God. When we proclaim the word and we bring others to Christ, we are glorifying God in the supreme way. Because when a person is redeemed, then they too begin to worship in spirit and truth. And will worship begets worshipers. And the cycle of glorifying God has begun anew in a new believer's life. This Christmas, make sure that the people in your life see a clear witness in your life that points them to Jesus Christ. Always make sure you point others to Christ. That is a right response to Christmas. The shepherds went to work that night <clears throat> thinking it was an ordinary night. Nothing different from any other night that they've ever watched the sheep. And they clocked in and they went out in the field and they simply began watching their sheep, but God had other plans. God stepped out of heaven, wrapped in the flesh of a baby, and was placed in the manger between two young earthly parents. Joseph and Mary waited for the world to respond. The shepherds responded. They responded in the right way. Praise, worship, they saw him <clears throat> with content hearts, and then they evangelized everyone they came in contact with. What is your response to Christmas? Let's pray. <coughs> Lord God, we come to you asking for, asking for strength and passion and courage and all the other things that it takes that we might rightly respond to the precious gift of Jesus Christ. Lord, help us to have content hearts, hearts that are at peace. Lord, help us with everything in us to seek out the Christ child this year, to worship and praise, and then God to share that love with everyone we meet. We cannot do that on our own. We stumble, we fall, we don't have the right words. But God, you can do it through us. So Lord, we open our hearts, we open our lives to you and ask that this Christmas, God, that you would just pour your spirit into us and indwell us and drive us with the passion that the shepherds had. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I'll well, stand and sing our closing hymn, Go Tell It on the Mountain, page 250.
I trust that you would go in God's love and the power of the Holy Spirit and the footsteps of Christ. And as you go, whether you find yourself at work, at uh, school, or uh, just at home with family members, make Christ the center of your season. Respond to Him rightly. Amen.